with that, I would like to introduce Richard Bishop. Uh, Richard is the president of Vivid Worldwide. Um, he is also a practitioner in um, many, many different things. Um, I've had the opportunity to know Richard, I guess, for nearly a decade. Um, seems like uh, he had more hair, I guess, when I first met him. But uh, in all sincerity, he's going to be covering off on a topic called Virtual Table Server. Uh, for those of us that have been around since the Mercury Interactive days and using Load Runner, uh, we'll all remember VTS. Um, however, this is one of the ways that you can dynamically update real-time test data within your scripts. And it's kind of a hidden gem that not many people know about. So Richard wanted to shed a little bit more light on that and share with us why it's such a great add-on for Load Runner and Performance Center. So Richard, with that, I will hand it over to you. And thank you, uh, thank you again for this opportunity. Yeah, thanks very much. As, uh, as Todd's already mentioned, it's um, yeah, VTS is one of these tools that's been around for a long, long time. It came out in uh, years ago with it, with the earlier versions of Load Runner. It was just known as VTS. VTS2 was a newer version, revamped and relaunched around the time that uh, Load Runner 11 and Performance Century 11 came out. Uh, despite the fact that it's been there for a long time, an awful lot of people still don't use it. It's almost like it's a secret. And I regularly come across people who are having difficulty using or creating test data and potentially using uh, updating test data on the fly, uh, trying to come up with really clever ways of, uh, of getting around a problem when actually they don't realize that within their kit bag, it's a product that comes free with Load Runner Performance Center, they've already got this tool. So I'm going to give you a, a, a brief run through as well as show a demonstration of VTS in action. So this is one example of how and why you might want to use um, VTS. So in this picture that I've got on the screen, you can see two ovals, each of which represent a business process. So the first one is a new customer, for example, maybe applying for a loan in a bank or just joining a uh, retail e-commerce site, for example. So a customer goes to a website, types in some data, and then at some point they're created a new account that customer is then at a later stage going to log in and that's the business process represented by the red circle. The problem that we have with this is that the script 2 which represents the customer login can't run until after script 1 has already run and if for example both scripts are data destructive and you need to run for every 100 logins that you want to do you need to create 100 lines of data and once those 100 lines of data have been consumed you need to create another 100. So you end up with this problem that you can't run script 2 until you run script 1. And it, as you run script 2, you start running out of data that was created by the earlier script. What often happens in places where I've worked, and I've seen this many times, is people will run script 1 in, uh, in this example for a prolonged period of time that will write out data to, for example, a CSV file. Testers will then take that CSV file and use it as a data file for their second script. And that's fine, but if you run your second script for any length of time, half the lines of data in your CSV file may not be valid anymore, and you have to restart the whole data prep process before you next run a test. This is where VTS comes in. And you'll see that the, the right-hand business process is no longer colored red because it's taking data from virtual table server rather than from a flat file. And the idea is that the data that's created by script 1 can be used immediately by script 2 in real time effectively so that there's no time consuming period of data preparation before you can run a second test for example. In a little bit more detail, this shows how it actually works. So the, the first script takes in a row of customer data from a table within VTS and in, in my example appends a, a timestamp to it to simulate a business process. The, the, the first script, VTS1, then takes information and writes it out into a second um, table, with, again held, held in VTS, and then a second script uh, takes that newly created data. But um, rather than talk you through it on the screen, I'll, I'll show you a demonstration. We had a technical difficulty which meant I couldn't show it completely live, but I've got a video which I can talk you through. 
So the, the potential jeopardy of, of showing you something live has been replaced by the potential jeopardy of a video running too fast for me to describe what's happening. So we'll see how that goes. If you want um, examples of these scripts, I have a GitHub repository where I've got a whole load of load runner sample data. Um, that's the, um, the URL for a folder containing the two scripts, which I'm about to demonstrate. And so that may well be useful to you. And if you want to have a browser around in there, there's a whole load of other load runner sample scripts that might be useful to you. So I'll just switch to the video. Okay, so this is um, what it looks like after you, immediately after you've installed Virtual Table Server. The default port, as you can see there, is port 4000. So if you install this on a machine, browse to port 4000 on that machine, that's where you'll find this interface. You'll see that when it first starts up, it's disabled. It says Access from Script Disabled in the right-hand corner. And it also shows the default port that scripts will connect to. So you've got... Uh, Port 4000 is where you manage it, and port 8888 is the default port where, you, where your scripts connect to it. So if you click Enable, we've now got it set up and ready and waiting to connect to Load Runner scripts. In, in our case, we want um, a, a second table to take the, the data, the output data effectively from the first script, and that's done by clicking Other Instances, in this case, I'll just call it table two and set a second port. Makes sense just to go to the next port up, treble eight nine. Okay, so that's now started, and I can browse to that and see the second table. So I've now got two tables that I can look at in my browser in real time, and are now ready to take and give out test data. Test data can be imported from a number of different sources. You can see there's an option to import from an external database as well as from uh, text files. It says CSV file, but it's a bit of a misnomer because there's lots of different uh, delimiters that are suitable. But in this case, I'm going to just use the built-in sample data that comes with it. So this, the sample data is great if you just want to have a play with VTS and familiarize yourself with it. So I've imported customer data there, as you can see. The good thing about VTS is that it's possible to dynamically edit these customer names, for example. I've got a couple of people who are commenting that they can't see the video, and I'm not quite sure why that is, but we'll make sure that you can definitely see the recording. Um, the first script, um, which is on the screen at the moment, is a sample load, is a load runner script that's available from that sample site. At the start, there's a whole load of variables that you set for the name of the uh, VTS server, as well as the ports uh, where you can access the data. And I've put transaction timings around each of these steps so we can time how long it takes for VTS to retrieve data from a table or write data to a table. There's a whole load of um, VTS functions that all start with LRVTC. They're all labeled in the um, function reference. And if, as, as is common with all of the functions in LoadRunner, if you highlight it and press F1, it brings up the function reference so you can get all the syntax correct. And there's a whole load of different options. I'm only going to demonstrate bringing in a row of data from VTS and then writing it out to another table, uh, appending some data to it. But you've got options to retrieve data by row or column, append indexes to it, and all those different kinds of things. So after importing a row of data, the next step is, in, in this example script, to append a timestamp to it just to show that we're doing something in, in real time. And in this example, 
I've changed the customer ID to my name, Richard. So when this runs, you should see the name Richard appear in the output log at the bottom of the test script. The, uh, because I'm bringing an entire row of data, I'll end up with a whole series of um, variables brought into my script, so in this case customer ID, company name and so on, as well as the timestamp that I've added. So what we should get in the second VTS table when this script runs is a line of data exactly the same as it appeared in the first table, but then with the, the timestamp appended to it. If I play the script, you see it ran incredibly quickly. And in the output window at the bottom, you can see it says row containing the customer Richard has been retrieved from table one. Further down, it says it was written to table two. And we can prove that that's happened by going back to the browser and having a look at the tables themselves. So you can see the, the row of data containing the name Richard is now gone, and it's been appended into the second table. So that proves it works for a, a single user, but obviously the next step is to run this at load. And the good thing about BTS is it is very scalable. So the second script is almost identical to the first one. The only difference is all it's doing is taking data from a table. So if I run that, again, it runs very quickly. And it gives me an update to say that the row containing customer, Richard, has been removed from the VTS table. And this has come from the table on port 8889, so we know this is our second one. So this uh, here is a load runner controller window. Two scripts, exactly the same scripts that I've just demonstrated. And they're set basically to run for around a minute. I can speed this video up so we don't have to watch the whole um, of the minute of a, of a test running. But what I've set it to do is for the VTS1 script to start, and then approximately five seconds later, the second script will start so that we know that the second script will always have data because it will always be working behind. OK, um, I've got a couple of updates from people who have been experiencing problems watching this video live. Um, it's, it appears to be because they can't install Flash. Um, the good news is our next version of this webinar will be in HTML5. So that means you won't need to install Flash, so that'll be good. Um, we'll also have these available as recordings, so you'll be able to either watch them online or download them as MP4s. So hopefully that will resolve the issue that you've got, because we're aware that people want to see this content. Um, I'm just did this test that's running. One of the things you can do whilst the test is running, as I showed earlier, is update data on the fly, and and that's a, a great advantage of being able to use VTS. You can't do that with CSV files that are obviously packaged up at the start of your test scripts. So I'm not going to uh, keep going because I'm well aware of the fact that immediately behind me is Chris Trimper who's waiting to do a demonstration of Stormer Functional and I, I don't want to crash too much of his presentation time. But that's giving you a quick feel for how VTS works as well as some of the rapid response times. You've seen from the graph that's online now that it's taking data typically in around a millisecond from VTS, so, and it writes at the same speed. So it's incredibly fast and scalable, so um, very useful if you want to either create data on the fly, or for example, if you're testing something like a web service, you may well be given an authorization token that expires after a period of time. So you might want to maintain a cache within VTS of recently issued tokens that can be used by various scripts. There's lots of potential reasons why you might want to use VTS. 
Uh, hopefully I've given you a flavour of those. Um, as I say, the recording will be available for those who, I think there were a couple of you who missed it. Um, so that'll be available for download. And if you have any questions, feel free to follow up either online now or by using the Vivid Sig Talks hashtag on Twitter or any of our social media.
Channels.